Welcome to the Masters in Financial Mathematics at Dublin City University. In this presentation, I will explain how the program works, what to expect, and uh, how to apply. So first of all, what is the goal of this program? The goal is to develop uh, some in-depth knowledge about the models that are used in financial institutions, not just an overview of how these models work and how to use them, but uh, uh, deep knowledge of how they uh, developed, uh, what is their meaning, what are their inner workings, and how one can change them to uh, better understand uh, the uh, structure of certain financial products, uh, their use, and uh, the valuation. So we want to teach you how to analyze and interpret financial data. This is a major goal of uh, the program also, and uh, we want also to understand how to apply uh, these models to world, the real world problems. So there are three main themes really in uh, the program. One theme is asset pricing and the valuation of uh, financial products that are dependent on the, the prices of other financial products such as derivatives. Uh, one of the uh, other important themes is uh, uh, portfolio choice and optimal investment and uh, dynamic trading. So uh, the asset allocation uh, issues in general that are important both for individuals and for institutions. And finally, risk management and hedging, which is also a key component of uh, um, financial industry nowadays. You do not want just to uh, take positions in financial products. You also need to manage risk and hedge these positions. And this is uh, one of the topics that uh, we're going to see in details. So this is one of the uh, oldest masters in uh, financial mathematics uh, um, in Europe and probably in the world. It dates back to 1996, and since 1996, this program has always uh, run. It has evolved over time to reflect the uh, changes and needs in the industry, and uh, we are proud to run it for the third decade now. So the program can be um, followed in uh, two formats. One is a full-time uh, format, which is one year, and the other is the part-time format, which uh, requires two years. So the full-time format is uh, most suitable for uh, full-time students who are not uh, uh, engaged in other you know, part-time jobs or uh, other activities. And the part-time option is, of course, more appealing to students who already have a job and uh, would like to advance in their career and develop their skills uh, in terms of uh, analytical knowledge and uh, mathematical uh, understanding of uh, financial models. So all these links that you see on these slides can be followed to uh, obtain more information than the one that I'm giving you right now. So feel free to uh, type or search for these keywords uh, online and you will be able to find uh, more information. So the full-time option uh, includes uh, four modules in the first semester. These four modules are probability in finance one and two. These are two separate modules that give you uh, the uh, um, probabilistic backbone of uh, everything that is done uh, in the other modules in this program. So it's very important that one understands uh, well the uh, basic uh, of probability and stochastic processes. And this is what uh, these two modules are doing with emphasis to financial applications. Then there's a module in financial and actuarial data analysis, uh, which uh, trains you to work directly uh, with data other than uh, just from a theoretical viewpoint. And we have also another module on uh, simulation in finance, uh, which trains you to develop uh, simulation techniques uh, and uh, numerical schemes for the pricing and uh, the um, hedging of the financial uh, derivatives and uh, products in general. In the spring, we have four more modules. One is about fixed income securities. One is about stochastic finance, uh, which includes essentially um, you know, theoretical asset pricing and uh, optimal control. And we have a module in deep learning which uh, discusses this uh, new artificial intelligence, uh, in particular machine learning techniques. And uh, we have also a choice of one module between either optimization or time series. And uh, students are free to choose either of these two modules. And uh, in the summer, 
we have uh, the choice between either a supervised personal uh, project or a work placement, which is essentially an internship. So each student uh, is uh, free to choose uh, between a uh, project uh, and an internship. Students who uh, do not have a job are typically more interested in uh, trying to find an internship so that they can uh, now start um, develop more knowledge of the financial industry and uh, other students who already have a job do not need to do an internship so they can do a project and uh, this is you know academically more demanding but uh, it has a lower industrial element of course so you can find more information about this uh, this link that you see below uh, which contains uh, all the details of the modules uh, that are in the full-time course and also in the part-time course so for the part-time course, uh, the uh, autumn of the uh, first year includes two modules, probability in finance one and two, which need to be done immediately so that one has the um, you know, probability uh, background necessary for the other modules. In the spring of the first year, uh, there are the modules on fixed income securities and stochastic finance. In the second year, in the autumn, there is the financial and actuarial analysis uh, module and the simulation fi for finance. And in the spring of the second year, there is the deep learning and the choice between optimization and time series advanced. So the part-time program uh, contains uh, exactly the same modules as the full-time program, but uh, the same material is um, basically spread over two years rather than one uh, to uh, allow students who have already a job uh, you know to um, follow the same material at a lower pace and importantly the uh, um, project or the internship under the part-time option can be done either in the summer of the first year or in the summer of the second year so here it is uh, up to the student to decide whichever works better um, we are happy to facilitate uh, the project or the uh, internship to be completed in either of the two summers. Now, how does the delivery uh, work, especially in these times of uh, coronavirus? So there are going to be some lectures that are pre-recorded, so they are available online um, anytime for viewing, and uh, other lectures that are live, and uh, these are an important aspect of the interaction uh, with uh, the lecturers and uh, also uh, among the students themselves. So the live lectures, uh, lectures are going to be in person as soon as uh, it is going to be allowed by the government. And uh, when that take happens, we are going to do these lectures uh, um, in a hybrid format, which means that uh, they will be delivered in a classroom, but they will also be broadcast to the students who are not able to um, to watch the lectures live, essentially. So all of the lectures, uh, both the ones that are pre-recorded and the ones that uh, are um, taking place live are going to be recorded and uh, made available to the students for later use. So if someone does not have time to uh, follow the live lectures for whatever reason, work or that otherwise, one is always able to um, re-watch these lectures uh, later um, at uh, one's leisure. Of course, we do recommend uh, that one does, you know, his best for to uh, attend some of the live lectures because the interaction with uh, uh, colleagues and uh, the faculty is an important aspect of, uh, of a program. So the assessments, uh, the continuous assessments, so like midterm um, tests are going to be, take place online. And the uh, final exams uh, are going to take place in person when we are allowed by the government. And uh, uh, until we are allowed by the government, they are also going to take place online uh, with uh, the availability of uh, the instructors during the exam. So it is as close as possible to a um, live exam itself. So what are the prerequisites to take this program? So first of all, it is necessary to have an undergraduate degree in a quantitative field. So typically would be mathematics, physics, engineering, economics, business, or along those lines. So we do not have a strict 
um, definition of what is a quantitative field, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, one has to see what is in the transcripts to understand uh, to what extent the emphasis is quantitative rather than uh, you know qualitative in uh, uh, the course itself. So normally we acquire a honor, so a second uh, class first division uh, grade, but uh, we need to look at uh, you know applications on an individual basis, so we do not uh, leave out uh, opportunities also because these uh, grade classifications change from one country to the other. So it is important, regardless of, uh, you know, in which topic the degree is, that one has uh, some knowledge of calculus, linear algebra, and preferably some exposure to probability, because these are very important, uh, um, you know, topics that uh, enter on a daily basis uh, of the courses that uh, we have discussed, uh, various modules, they all use indirectly or directly these topics, so it is important that they have been studied and understood properly. It is also necessary for um, students who uh, did not complete their degree in English to have a certification of uh, English, English language proficiency. You can see the detail at the link uh, below. Uh, typically, the tests that uh, certify this English proficiency are the um, YELTS, uh, the TOEFL, and um, there is also now the Duolingo test, uh, uh, but you can see the details at the link. If you already have a degree that was taught in English, then uh, that counts as English proficiency, so you do not have to worry about that. Now. What kind of careers can you expect? So why should you take uh, this program um, depending on what you want to achieve later? So what you can expect with uh, this guy type of degree is a quantitative role in a financial institution, an insurance company, and typically also consultancies. Um, you can obtain jobs that typically um, require um, analytics, okay? So the processing of data, typically in a financial or insurance context. Uh, you can obtain positions uh, with uh, investments, so buy side uh, quant from uh, using another terminology. You can also obtain uh, sell side quant uh, um, positions, depending on um, you know, your skills, of course, uh, such as product pricings, uh, pricing of insurance claims, and uh, design of other financial products, and you can also obtain careers in risk management. Um, if you prefer to continue with the academic career, you can also uh, uh, access uh, PhD programs in financial mathematics and financial economics. These are the two typical outs for uh, a graduate of uh, this degree. And uh, if you want a sample of companies where our graduates have obtained um, recent roles, uh, you can see here you have AXA, Barclay, Merrill Lynch, uh, and others. So there is really a range of opportunities. They are typically in uh, finance, uh, banking, insurance, and technology. These are the broad uh, four areas that uh, you know, uh, are typically uh, taken by our graduates. So who is teaching this course? Um, there's me, Paolo Guazzoni. Uh, who, uh, also the uh, program chair right now. My colleagues, uh, John Appleby, Tom Brady, Vladimir Krilov, and uh, Ryan Kwakchuan Wong. And uh, all these people are researchers in this area, so um, you are going to learn from people who are researchers in uh, the topics that they are teaching about. Uh, you are not learning from people who do not specialize in this area and that you know, are teaching it you know, for other reasons. So if you want to get uh, an idea of uh, what is the quality of the research of the faculty at DCU, here you can see uh, the weight uh, of the contributions to this uh, flagship journal, which is called Mathematical Finance, in the three years 2015-2017, which is one of the most uh, recent uh, ratings. You can see that uh, Dublin City University was more or less up to the uh, seventh place, which is pretty good, and uh, you can see which other institutions uh, were publishing in this journal, and uh, from that you can uh, 
form an opinion of uh, how good this program is going to be. In terms of fees, you will see that this year offers one of the best values that you can find in any English-speaking country. This year is a public university, so full-time fees are going to be uh, 4,577 euros for uh, uh, EU students, and for non-EU students it's 15,000. So the part-time option um, essentially costs more or less the same, but it is built in a more complicated way. So essentially, the EU fee is 368 euros per module. So for each of the modules that I have showed in the previous slides, there is this fee. And the fee uh, for the uh, project is uh, 1,235. And on top of this, there's also a 170 uh, euro uh, fee for the um, breaking down in the part-time option. Basically, it's called capitation fee. Non-EU fees are you know, proportionally higher, the sum is the same as uh, for the full-time program essentially, or very close. It's uh, 1470 per module plus uh, close to 5000 for the project and uh, again 170 for the capitation fee. So essentially the fees that you see here for the full-time program give you a pretty close description of what is the total cost of the degree in terms of tuition, um, regardless of whether you're doing it uh, full-time or part-time. Now, if you want to apply, you can uh, go to this uh, link here at um, the uh, CRM Recruit uh, website of this EU. When you apply, you can choose the code DC704 for the full-time option and DC761 for the part-time option. And you can find an application guide, also the same website, uh, which explains all the step-by-step -by -step, by step process of the application. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me an email.